All right, uh, today I have Sergey with me, who's an engineer at Replit, uh, to talk about why we switched from Webpack to Vite. It's not Vite, right? It's Vite. It's Vite, yep. I right. thought it was Vite for the longest time too, but. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, why were we using Webpack and CRA in the first place? Um, yeah, a little bit about some context. Um, for, for, for the longest time, our React template was was Webpack and, and CRA, um, at least for my entire time here. I don't know what it was prior to that, but um, the, the reasoning there is sort of just because that was the standard for the community. Um, and of course, the JavaScript community moves pretty fast, so there's a new hype tool every year or two. Um, but Webpack is kind of like the mature dominant player uh, at this point in terms of you know JavaScript bundling. And uh, CRA is generally like considered one of the fastest ways to build a React app, or at least it was. Um, now I think Vercel and Next.js is pretty good, a uh, pretty good competitor as well. Um, but we, we kind of found that it didn't really fit our use case. Um, so Webpack and CRA have gotten really bloated over the years. Um, and you know, the, the first app uh, that you create is going to be much larger than it needs to be, right? especially for something simple. If you just want to get started, if you want to prototype a uh, simple UI, um, it's not, it's, it's oftentimes overkill. Um, and so that was part of the motivation to get us on the V. Right. Uh, you mentioned Next.js. Um, you know, we're going to talk about like V in particular, but did you consider Next.js too? Um, we did. Uh, we just found that when we gave Vita a try, it worked really, really well in Replit. The, the nice thing is that um, Vita is very fast and it's very simple. And uh, those are two things that we like a lot at Replit. And it just worked very well um, on, our um, on our like containers that we provide for each REPL. Um, so ultimately, like each REPL is a Linux container. Um, and previously with the Webpack CRA, uh, uh, template that we had, the um, fast reloading didn't work very well. Uh, it would work sometimes, it would be spotty, um, and it wasn't very fast. Um, and it was just very difficult to configure on Replit specifically. Like, it was not something the average user could just get started and, uh, and, and get going with. Whereas with Vite, we found, you know, we basically ran the create command, which is yarn create at VJS app, um, selected a template, and then changed one thing in the config and it was working off the bat. HMR worked flawlessly. It was super fast to make updates, super fast to see changes. Um, and so as soon as we tried it, um, it was just, it was just a, a great experience. So we were like, okay, let's stick with this. Um, so yeah. Right. Does Vite replace both CRA and Webpack? Um, no, it doesn't. So the, the, sort of caveat here is that Vite isn't um, like an all-in-one replacement for Webpack. It's to some extent, it has a subset of features. Um, and even Evan Yu, the creator of Vite, makes this clear um, that it's not meant to just completely, you know, replace any Webpack project uh, and that it's not suitable for all cases. With that said, what Vite does really well is that it, it's, it targets the common case. Um, so 80 to 90% of people could use Vite no problem in their projects, um, particularly beginners, right? And so that's a lot of the target audience that we um, aim for at Replit. So we, we want something that's really easy uh, and that doesn't require a lot of configuration, right? So Webpack at this point is notorious for how ridiculously complex it is, Webpack configs, and how sort of like scary they are, right? It's so like the first time you're dealing with Webpack, there's just so much going on. There's so much knowledge you have to catch up on. You have no idea. You have to add CSS loaders and all of this crazy stuff. Um, it, you know, and it's gotten to the point where popular frameworks like CRA um, and, and what Next.js is doing as well are trying to like abstract over that so that you basically don't have to deal with config at all. And they, they give you essentially an escape hatch, at least CRA does, where you can eject and then like modify the Webpack config yourself, which oftentimes you have to do once you hit a certain point. Um, so Vita is nice in that like, it's not, you don't need a lot of configuration to get started. It has a lot of really good sensible defaults and certain things will work out of the box, like TypeScript translation, TypeScript just works. 
CSS modules just works. Um, so it's really nice in that sense. It's very opinionated, uh, but it is a still extensible. It still has a config that you can go and modify if you need to make changes, but you know, nine times out of 10, you're probably not going to. Cool. And you have a demo, right? Yeah, I can share my screen. Um, this is basically uh, sort of what V looks like on Replit. Um, so uh, to, to go over a couple of things, we can start, let's see, index.html is going to be the entry point here. Um, it's very simple, just has a div with the root and then imports the script as a module uh, from source main.jsx. Um, and, and for some context here, this is basically uh, just um, us having ran the yarn create template. The only changes we had to make on, um, to get this to work on Replit were here in the Vite config, or excuse me, in the Vite config. Uh, we had to basically specify the HMR server uh, as port 443 so that it's basically, um, uh, so that the HMR server is able to read properly. Uh, that's like the largest difference we have so far. But other than that, this is basically just um, the, the standard uh, yarn create command. And so you see here, it's just going to, uh, in addition to the index HTML and the Vite config, we have um, a source directory here. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Main.jsx is gonna be your entry point in React. It's really just importing this app component, uh, which we can take a look at here. Uh, it has this simple example of, of us using state. Um, it's nice and functional. We're using hooks. Um, so pretty, pretty modern React. It's very easy to get started. Um, and so, yeah, and then we have some CSS here as well. Uh, just some general styling. Um, and so that's, you can see the web view here is really neat. So when we, when we run, um, uh, run the app, it's just going to start the web server, uh, the, the VDev server uh, and the HMR server. Um, and uh, we'll see the a live preview here. Um, the other cool thing is that the console here is going to tell you when things update uh, and how long it takes. And you'll just you'll see just how fast it is. Um, so to give you an example here, we can we can come in uh, to the main component and we can just start like editing text. So let's say we want to delete this bit, and you can see that that's reflected live here, uh, very very quickly. And the the HMR update basically. Um, will show you uh, when it's complete. Um, so, you know, you can go in here and uh, let's go to app.css. Maybe we want to change the background color, right? So maybe we want to do uh, red. Uh, maybe that's too bright. We want to do black. Um, so it's very easy to sort of change stuff around. And, uh, you know, the updates are basically instant, right? So you might increase the font size here. Oh, whoops. We already have that. Um, and so, you know, there it is. Uh, very easy to prototype UIs. Um, things move very quickly. Uh, it's nice. And th the other cool thing about HMR, which is which stands for hot module replacement, uh, which, which is basically what allows for this experience to be so fast, is that, um, oh, whoops, is that state is saved, right? So if you, um, change a module that's uh, different, that's in a different part of the tree. Um, you can see, for example, maybe I change this to, you know, blue. Uh, my count here remains consistent, right? So the count is still six. And then let's change this back to black. Um, and so that part, that module, that part of the tree wasn't replaced because it wasn't edited. And so it's able to maintain its state, which is really, really neat. Um, so, you know, that's another benefit of HMR. But again, HMR is pretty commonplace these days. Um, Next.js, uh, you know, Vercel makes use of it. Um, but but Vite HMR is very fast, which is nice. Um, so maybe we want this to be, I don't know, a little faster. Um, so yeah, that's that's a little bit about the demo. It's pretty simple, um, and it's it's very easy to get started, and the updates are, are incredibly quick, right? Nice. So with Webpack, it was slower, right? It was much slower. And we didn't really get to a good place where the updates were this live. Um, you'd basically have to keep rerunning. 
Um, so, and you know, to some extent that was a limitation of Replit, but this was, you know, mo modern JavaScript tooling like that has just gotten so like obtuse um, that uh, it, it was very slow to run on our, on our infrastructure. Yeah. I remember in the original, you know, draft of your blog article about this, mm -hmm. you know, we were saying something like what pack is designed for an expensive laptop, like, you know, MacBook or whatever. Right. Exactly. So, so, you know, the other thing that we cared very deeply about here at Replit is accessibility, right? Uh, which is why I mentioned we were excited to see something like Pete because, it, you know, it's very simple and it's very fast and that's all that matters, right? Uh, when you're, um, you know, uh, when given our use cases, right here, if you want to prototype simple UIs or, or make a quick website, um, you don't need something like Webpack. You don't need something like CRA uh, for the vast majority of those use cases. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of curious if someone was, you know, trying to choose between say what pack CRA beat and say next JS, how do you think they should go about that? Right. So one of the downsides I'd say about beat and just generally any new, um, sort of JavaScript tooling is I think you, with, with anything like this, any new tool that comes out, uh, you have to give it some time, right? So like these tools aren't necessarily the most mature. Uh, and like I said, the JavaScript community moves very quickly. People get excited about the next hot thing. Uh, so in, you know, and it might not be as extensible as the mature tooling that exists today. Um, so ultimately with something like V, I wouldn't necessarily go out of your way and rewrite your whole code base into it, but I would give it a try, see if it fits your use case and, and try to incorporate it. Maybe you'll have a great time. Maybe you'll find that you hit some limitations because, um, it's still quite new. Uh, so, um, at this point, I really like, uh, Next.js, um, and, and the Vercel team is doing a really, really good job at making React apps very easy to build and very performant and coming with all these benefits like SSR. Um, so I, I, that's my go-to these days. Um, they have a lot of awesome templates to get started as well. CRA at this point is a little outdated. Um, I can't think of any examples where you'd want to use it over Vercel, uh, just because it's something that's sort of the community is slowly moving away from. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's, that's basically what I would say. I think Vita is great for, at least for smaller projects and for things that are maybe, um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily migrate all of your production code base to this quite yet. Um, with that said, I think in a matter of time, you know, it will be quite mature and it will fit the majority of use cases. Um, but uh, at this point, I would generally stick to Vercel unless you have some, you know, major performance issues, uh, in which case Vita is very nice because it's lightweight. Uh, and like I said, it's very fast. Nice. Cool. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to ask you about today. Was there like anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, I mean, I just want to emphasize that like, this is going to be a huge priority for us. And, um, we, you know, the experience is only going to get better from here, right? So we're going to invest more and more into web development, into the tooling for this, uh, and just make it a blazing fast experience. Sounds good. All right. Uh, thanks for being here, Sergey. Cool. Thanks so much, YK. Yep.